All right, good. All right, hopefully we don't have to miss background noise. Good afternoon, everybody. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. some music from uh, the Damon Gaming channel here. All right, let's get rolling. <clears throat> Close that out. All right, so thanks everybody for joining who's on so far. Our agenda for today, um, we're going to talk, I'm going to re-record my thoughts on the crypto ETF. Let me turn down my mic volume just a little bit. See over here, it's like spiking quite a bit. All right, you guys let me know in the chat if anybody's on how the sound is. What I'm doing is I've, I've got a new boom mic coming in and I'll be able to hopefully improve audio quality um, pretty soon. But what we're gonna do is we're going to, our agenda for today is we're gonna, I'm gonna re redo my thoughts on the ETF that I did last night to get us started. Uh, because I had some background music and I think it's kind of distracting and what I realized is I can edit these live videos to make individual videos so I'm just gonna flow through here and uh, today we're gonna go through uh, an explanation of why ETFs do what they do um, especially these crypto ETFs um, then we're gonna talk about my top uh, crypto to hold in 2021 and then we're going to um, go into some news that I've got queued up here to talk about. So let's get to it. So I'm sorry for starting the stream late today. Normally we're starting the stream at two o'clock on um, uh, Fridays, but um, I'm, I'm going to consider this really getting started right about two thirty. So I'm going to kind of just bide my time here, and we'll get rolling here pretty soon. I found out, just a quick public service announcement, I found out that a couple, several close people to us have contracted COVID recently. Um, so I spent a moment just reaching out, sending a few messages to them, seeing if anybody needed anything. Um, but Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity has some really, really good videos of months ago that I watched, you know, different things to help build your immune system and things. So I'm currently sipping on some elderberry tea and I just took a little bit of zinc before I walked in here because I was around some of them recently. But uh, check out his channel, um, Chris Martinson, uh, Peak Prosperity, for some, some really good coverage of coronavirus all through the whole thing. Uh, he's quit doing regular videos, but he's got a lot of really good information. Uh, if, if you guys have friends or family yourself get COVID, just some good information. I'm not going to try to give any advice at all. Just you know, look, at his, look at his channel. So I don't feel bad, um, but I was around them. All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to start by explaining my what happens with these crypto ETFs. So I'm going to pull up the Bitwise chart here, and I'm going to get mentally prepared to go, and we're, I'm going to chop this up into a dedicated video for this. All right, how do I want to start this? All right, um, so if you were wondering why the Bitwise brand new crypto ETF pumped from 20 to $200 and then back down to 70 during our last Bitcoin uh, bull market pop. Well, this video is for you. So what happened here is that um, as these funds come online, especially new funds, there's a certain amount of assets that are maintained by the fund. And whenever uh, people come in and buy the fund, you're actually buying um, you know, a, a paper certificate for that fund. You're not actually buying the underlying asset, right? You're buying the, the exchange traded fund itself, a portion of the fund. 
Now, as money flows into these funds, they have to go increase their or, or decrease their, their um, position in the underlying assets accordingly, basically is how it works, right? So when you look at, uh, you're not, when you buy a, an ETF, the moment you buy it, they don't necessarily turn around at that moment and buy the underlying asset. They let things kind of settle out. So when you have a very bullish um, um, ETF with, with underlying assets that are very bullish, like Bitwise with the crypto, uh, they have these cryptocurrencies here. When things started to pump, the premium went through the roof. So if, if a ETF is trading above this line or here, this blue line on this Bitwise chart is called the NAV. It's the net asset value. If you're trading above the NAV value, the ETF is said to be trading at premium. Now, sometimes ETFs trade below the NAV value, like what's happened recently in, in energy. There's a lot of ETFs in energy that the, uh, NAV, the, the, the market price was below the account uh, value of, of the assets held in the, in, by the ETF. Okay, so when you see this huge spike like this, it's a good indicator that, that you know, we've had an expansion. So what happened, you had an expansion uh, a rise in Bitcoin, so a lot of money come, came flooding into the fund. Now, as even if Bitcoin just goes sideways as it consolidates, what will happen is this premium should decline as people quit buying into the, the fund so fast. Um, so it's a good good way to, if you're going to trade a very small amount of this, like I bought a very small amount and I sold, you know, I did the, an open the day it tanked. Um, you know, I wouldn't trade a large position or anything, but but whenever we have an expansion and Bitcoin's on the rise, these these ETFs are probably going to rise, including Grayscale, faster than the underlying asset does. And it's almost like a small leverage trade. And then when they consolidate or drop, they, they'll if, if there's a high premium, they'll drop faster. Now, in the case of energy ETFs, what you know what happened was when energy started becoming really bearish a couple of years ago, people were selling faster than the fund was selling the underlying assets. And that was due to speculation that energy prices, oil prices were going to keep going down and the, under, the underlying assets themselves were going to eventually go down in value. And so that's why the, the price was below. And so it was trading at a discount. So that's what goes on with these ETFs fundamentally. So you, what you need to watch is the NAV, the net account value, and then the premium percentage. So something like trading at 150% or 200% of NAV is reasonable. This got up to like 400% NAV uh, at one point, I believe, which is, you know, just that's a bit, that's, that's a little excessive, obviously. So that, that's why I sold um, where I did because we reached a, a premium point that was not sustainable and it was likely to come back down. All right, so that's that. Um, I hope I gave a decent explanation. I'll make that a dedicated video. I don't know what else there is to say on that topic. If anybody else is out there on the live stream, hey, hello, everybody. I'm just going to chat. Um, the next thing I wanted to get into here, I wanted to kind of get that out of the way before too many people got on. Is my top crypto hodl position. So I'm going to resize my screen here so that this fits in here. And we're just going to quickly discuss. And I've got new, I've made my, my little profile picture which I made in like two minutes before a little less cartooning silly so you guys get the idea close enough close enough for government work I don't know if anybody else is out there I didn't I didn't get Alan queued up to be a moderator today did I it's all right a little disheveled okay so um, we're going to chop this up into a separate video too. my top crypto to hold for 2021. So um, without further ado, that is these these five coins here. Here's my allocation across my personal portfolio. I, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Do not listen to me. You will end up living in a van down by the river and lose a thousand percent. That's why the that's why my background is the way it is. But uh, what I'm holding for 2021 is, uh, first of all, Bitcoin. And everybody should understand uh, why I'm holding Bitcoin. It's, it's, the, it's the main crypto to be holding here. And I just realized something. I don't have a flow yet. XBT, 
I put XRP. <laughs> let's, re let's start over. All right. So my top crypto to hold for 2021, starting at Bitcoin, BTC or XBT on Kraken. And I don't need to explain why. I keep at least 70%. Hey, Justin, thanks. Does it sound okay, Joel? Does it sound okay out there? Hello, John. John, Justin, Joel. Um, so my personal allocation, again, not financial advice, but my personal allocation for this year, for 2021, uh, I have about 70% of my holdings in Bitcoin. And that's my base account. So anything, any of my trading is also done in Bitcoin. So my base account for trading is in Bitcoin. And I should add to here, you know what, I'm just going to do this live right now. I'm going to just, I'm going to delineate here my trading position. So, um, I'm going to put a star, star varies from 60 to 90%. Based on the trade. All right, so my trading account, basically my trading account is like 30% uh, of my Bitcoin. So if I'm full on in, in a bunch of trades and I'm fully uh, um, you know, in trades, that would drain my, my holdings down to 60%. And then when I'm out of alts and I'm back into Bitcoin, um, I'm closer to 90 percent and these will scale down accordingly like these might be down to but what i'm doing right now is my base account all right so um yeah my base account is is all is all bitcoin so i trade versus bitcoin i have more eth I have wrapped ETH otherwise, but scary close. Yeah, I'm actually probably, this is probably inaccurate. I'm probably actually more like this. I, I haven't run the exact numbers, but something like that is actually probably more accurate. Probably borrow 2% from somewhere. Whatever. Um, I'm, but I just made it even, this people. These are roughly even. So I think the big news here for so my my the, my top holds for for 2021 Bitcoin Ethereum um, I probably actually have more than nine percent Ethereum um, if I actually count it up Cardano and Chainlink the idea here is that big, what I want people to take away from this is that for me personally for the vast majority of my accounts in Bitcoin I'm spreading fairly evenly across these three um, you know at, at any given moment in time depending on how the charts look I probably have more ETH than the other two currently. Um, as things expand, it may go the other way as, as prices move around. And then uh, VeChain is the fifth one I'm adding to my list. And so I kind of wanted to talk about VeChain just for a minute and why, why that, why I'm, I'm, I still haven't built up this full three percent here. I've been been buying small little pieces, but I will be getting up to three percent and putting it in, in uh, self custody storage. Well, you know, putting it on a cold wallet um, for this run and just holding it. And here's why. Let me get to this. Um, so VeChain is really targeting supply chain logistics. And when you look at the state of the world uh, with COVID and the vaccines and then all the supply chain issues that have been, you know, rampant for the last several years, um, better, better and smarter supply chains are going to be critical. And uh, VeChain is, is the leader in that space. And so it's a... Um, as you can see here, their toolchain product is a blockchain as a service platform. Um, and so it offers all these things, product lifestyle management, supply chain process control, data deposit, data certification process. And so they made some news recently with uh, this toolchain, uh, some customers that are very familiar with, with deploying these supply chain um, solutions. It came out and said that when they deployed Toolchain, it was easier to deploy than some of the leaders in the industry. <coughs> Sorry. So, you know, given given the uh, the, the tech, they have a lot of uh, you know um, credibility with their technology. They're the leader in this this space. I have to mute for a second. How do I mute on this? Swallow some tea down the wrong pipe. Sorry, it's gonna make my video a mess. 
All right, anyway. So that's why I'm adding it to my, uh, my top hold positions for 2021. What's going on, Jordan? All right, so there's my top hold positions for 2021. Now I will, we got a few people starting to get on here now. So we'll get into free flow and Q&A. I wanted to get those kind of out of the way by 2.30 so I could chop those up and make those dedicated videos. Let's start going to the news for the week. So obviously Bitcoin took out, <clears throat> it looks like real Jordan. Bitcoin took out the, the prior all time high. Um, but what I noticed here on Cointelegraph was this neat little article about uh, new retail buyers aren't really, haven't really got rolling yet. So <clears throat> this also affects two things. This affects the altcoin cycle and it affects that, that um, speculation we were talking about in, in, in the runaway price of Bitcoin where, where, invest, where institutional buyers may not put a floor under it at a certain point. So given that, you know, um, what this article went on to talk about was a, a few metrics that they're watching about, you know, Twitter tweet levels, Wikipedia searches, and then Google activity for Bitcoin. Um, we're actually, you know, still down quite a bit. So uh, the average retailer hasn't necessarily picked up on, on Bitcoin just yet. So while we're at an all time high, let's go take a look back at the chart, see where we're at on the daily. This is a 12 hour. Yeah, we're right there on top of that. I've got a trend line that we're on top of, but the trend line might actually be better to be above. Let's look at my trend line real fast. We're consolidating, obviously. So mine goes back to this peak down here. These touches here. These are some bodies that I keyed on. Touch, body, body, touch, touch, body, body. Um, we'll take that trend line on up here and we're sitting right on top of it from what I can see. I'm gonna get rid of this Heath level. But <clears throat> this is institutions that have pushed this up here. So we'll see what we'll see what the next phase is. Have you? Ah, here we go. We've got some questions coming in. But I want to discuss that article here. So, you know, we still haven't even got uh, spe speculation yet, which makes sense. You look at Bitcoin dominance. Let's just take a minute to, to tie these two things, these thoughts together. Bitcoin dominance, uh, institutions, I said this earlier, when I looked at the tape, when I looked at the level two data and all the orders coming in, I see what, what to me looks like very institutional, you know, relentless NASDAQ, relentless SPX buying style from institutions. I don't see that happening on Ethereum or these other coins. I see them, they're playing follow the leader right now on their BTC charts. Their, their, their USD charts are a shallow mirror of what Bitcoin's doing. They're moving up and but less so. Um, but but Bitcoin's being bought and driven by institutional buying from what I can tell and these others are not. So when when retail really starts to get involved, the speculation starts to get involved, that's when we should start to see the alts really start to move. And we might see some volatility finally in Bitcoin where Bitcoin actually makes a run that gets away from price that institutions are willing to put a floor under and then we get a bigger sell off. So we'll see if that happens. But I, I, I'm starting to think that we need a, a bigger pop to a bigger number before we get that 30% sell off. That's, that's what it looks like to me. All right, let me go to questions here. Any interest to IOTA? Yeah, similar state. So Joel, I was really big. I was really big into IOTA a few years ago. So that was my pet project before Cardano in 2021. Um, I'm a little dated, honestly, until the last six months. I finally got back up to speed on a lot of things crypto. I was a big... Oh, you know what? I just realized I need to readjust my screen. I'm sorry, everybody. So I moved it around for that other chart. Let me, just, let me quickly readjust this. Next, I'm going to go this way. Um, I was a big fan of IOTA back in the day. That was, what, that was my pet project, and I had a lot of IOTA. Um, and it pumped, let's look at the chart. I took it off my charts because, so it's a DAG based, so uh, directed acyclic graph technology. Um, it's not a true blockchain because it's a DAG uh, data architecture, but, um, you know, it's, it's bottoming out here maybe, but it's got an ugly looking chart otherwise. I think earlier, 
was it August? No, it was, it was like, it was sometime over here. I, I sold on a pump when it pumped earlier this year. Um, I have my look at the USD chart. And I got out. So um, they had a nasty hack earlier this year. And so the technology is kind of harder. Yeah, it was in this ascending channel. I think I called this out. I did post this chart on CTM like months ago. We were in an ascending channel. I posted that like when I first joined CTM actually, I think, kind of early on. And then we had this big breakout and I sold on this big breakout up here. Um, I got completely out. So it's not a true blockchain. It's directed ASIC graph technology, um, which is slightly different than a blockchain but it works in a similar decentralized manner so it's not people say it's not a blockchain but i mean it's the same concept um but the technology is just a little bit too foreign and what ada has rolled up is kind of the best of both worlds so their underlying technology and consensus model um is a little bit more efficient and it's more tried and true technology so that's why i've kind of switched my allegiance to ada um, so i've taken iota completely off my chart just because um, a, the charts haven't told me to do anything with it. I haven't heard a lot of really positive hype since I was really, I was really involved in the project like 2018, 2019. And then I kind of like 20, uh, well, 2018, really 2019. I kind of got out of crypto cause we we're in that bear phase and, um, and then 2020, I kind of got back in. So am I a full-time trader? I am not. I have a full-time, uh, W2 gig. Um, so the, no, I trade part-time and I trade for fun and cause I want to. I want to grow my little nest egg. All right. Colleagues are starting to talk about BTC. Yeah, so I've told a ton of people that I know. I, you know, I've been telling everybody I know. I'm just, you know, I'll throw it out there casually. Yeah, buy Bitcoin. And I'm like, they're all going to come asking me about it at some point. <clears throat> I've been telling them for months to buy Bitcoin. And I'm having a flood of people that I've been telling to buy Bitcoin come and ask me about, okay, how do I, how do, I do this? That's why I created a video recently about just how to get started because so many people were asking me. And then I created another video about fighting FOMO because I literally had a friend of mine who is laid off right now um, text me and say, hey, man, should I just like max? Like, basically, it, it, he didn't come out and say it directly, but he said, should I max out my credit card to buy Bitcoin and right now? And when it was like when it was running up. And that's when I made that fighting FOMO video, because that, that's the last thing I want people to do is go buy and, either on leverage or credit. And then when they see things sell off, panic and sell and just then really be hurt. So, um, yeah, so I see a lot of people coming in. Lots of more people looking for 5 and 8K Bitcoin now. They want in. They'll be buying much higher at 22K. Do we really know it's institutions driving it or is it just rhetoric bouncing around cryptoverse? There must be signals. Hey, Joel, I firmly believe it is institutions. Um, let me make sure. Let me pull up a guest. Hold on. I'm going to do this just so I don't accidentally pull up my live accounts. Pro.coinbase.com. Here's why I think it's institutions. It was just the chart maybe look. It made the the, the um, data may look a lot different this live time right now. So here's so I did I didn't log in or anything. I just went to uh, Coinbase Pro without logging in, and I just pulled up the chart. So you can click on depth chart over here to get the depth chart that I kept talking about. And you see now how slanted. <laughs> It's like, so if you zoom in, it's a, it's a very strong buy wall now. So it's not looking like it's going to drop a lot. And we got a new little sell wall here at 25K. That, that's nothing. That's, that's just, that's, that's, that'll die quickly. Now, I was talking a lot about that 20K sell wall because when I first started looking at this, it was extremely shallow on the sell side and extremely steep, steep on the, on the uh, I mean, it's extremely steep on the sell side and extremely shallow on the buy side. Um, the other thing, though, whenever you watch the tape over here on the right, Oh man, it's getting me this login thing. So you can kind of see uh, when you watch this. If, if you're if you're an like advanced trader, and I can't uh, I can't do any like advanced tooling because I can't. I have, it's going to make me log in and do anything. But I think I can zoom in, zoom out. I don't know what let me. Um, if you go watch some YouTube videos and like reading the tape and trading the tape, there are day traders that don't look at charts. They look the, look what I'm looking at right here. They'll trade purely off of something like this. And it's, it's, it's effective. You can do it. You can trade purely on orders, looking at the order book and seeing what's happening with orders. Um, you don't need a chart per se. Charts make things easier to roll up a lot of this information. But when you look at the behavior, especially on this right, the trade history, and then you look over here on the left at the order book, when you see dips happen, you'll see, you'll see um, there's, there's, not, there's not a lot of advertised orders, but all of a sudden you'll see a bunch of orders come flying in the trade history. So 
these these orders that are sitting here on the on the book, this depth chart, you're seeing these orders on the book. These are you know these are traders or whatnot that, that have their orders set that just want to have their limit orders in case things move. But the people that are doing 90% of the buying over here on the right and the actual trade history, they're not on the order book. They're coming in at the last minute and placing orders in the order book right right across the spread, and they're not actually sitting here and, and being visible to the market. And you see these just chunks and chunks and chunks of buy, relentless buy orders coming in. That's not trader activity. That's a, like what you see right here. If you see these, when you see a little bit of a sell-off and you see nothing but these giant chunks of small orders, that is investors coming in and putting a floor under it. That's, that's actually what's happening right now. You can kind of just see it. Now, this may be traders too, right? Not necessarily, but when you see a pattern develop over a, a series of time, and you see that that it's algorithmic activity because it's not there. It's it's very quick action. It's not showing up here in the order book. It just shows up in the trade log in the order book. The very last minute, you'll see it pop in right across the spread. So that that's that's a few hints. Now I don't know for a fact it's institutions. This is just why I believe it's institutions. You just look at this order book and it's relentless buying. And traders don't buy relentlessly. They don't have the capital to do so. That takes large fund managers to buy relentlessly or you know companies that want to put bitcoin on the balance sheet or whatever um so that's that's a little bit on that btc relatively short term 20k does this have an uh, impact in the alt season so let's go do a little history lesson once more um now obviously this cycle is is, is far different than the last cycle so let's not assume that anything is going to be the same but Again, I keep talking about these hints. Maybe we can learn something. Um, you know, we spent several days up here above the all-time high, and it was several days later. And so we're getting very, very close. Like, literally, it could be any minute now, like any any second now. And I, I you know I think probably a week or so is, more, is fairly reasonable for what I'm about to show you to happen. But I'm going to look at the ETH BTC chart and see if I can't find the Coinbase one. I was looking for this the other day. I'm going to take a minute to try to find it. I should just type out ETH BTC. What am I thinking? Um, that would have helped me find it quicker. All right, I'm going to change this uh, in honor of, of ETH. I'm going to change it to the purple color. All right, so here's the ETH BTC ratio. All right, so, you know, it's it's very, very, very sideways for a long time. What breaks, what breaks that sideways action, a very sideways action? Well, it's not Bitcoin pumping. It's Bitcoin selling off. It literally, so right here, what are, where is this at? Let's, let's, let's draw a straight up and down line right there what happened right there what happened right there let's make this like there. well you see this big this it got under the all-time high and then that's when ethereum started moving so what's going on here well why is it that when bitcoin sells that ethereum and this is the bitcoin this is not ethereum's price versus the us dollar. this is a, this is ethereum's price versus bitcoin well what's going on here is that people a, there's people entering the space because Bitcoin's making news about all-time highs and people speculating on other uh, crypto assets. And B, it's people taking profits from Bitcoin and moving them, diversifying across crypto and not selling for fiat. So, um, and I was around for this last cycle. So, I mean, I've, I've got a little bit of, of history. I was clueless as to what was going on. And I sold, you know, I had a lot of ETH. I think I probably sold it all. You know, I, I know I sold most of it before it started this big run. Because I'd been mining it, and I just was happy to take a little profit, but I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea this was going to happen. And it doesn't have to happen again just like this either, but this is some hints that we can look for. So I'm waiting for, um, you know, uh, I, I'm waiting for the moment when people start taking profits out of Bitcoin and moving them to crypto. I mean, to uh, diversifying across other crypto. And then, uh, you know, and the speculators to come in, to, you know, new traders, uh, retail to come in and, and join the party. A big reason I, I, you know, after Jordan mentioned, maybe, you know, asked us to put out some videos, a big reason I kept up with this channel was, you know, all the people that we were just talking about that are just joining us late. And I realized 2021, we're going to have a flood of, of people, traders coming in. People are going to be, you know, there, there's going to be lockdowns, uh, you know, winter lockdowns probably. And people are going to be stuck at home and Bitcoin's going to be making all-time highs. And so that's where people are going to be trying to day trade or trade Bitcoin. And so I wanted to put out some helpful beginner videos just to get people started. Uh, to try to get people to realize they need to buy and hold Bitcoin and not be super active in trading it, but um, and then what to do with the altcoins, um, so and, and how to do all this stuff. All right, let's go through some questions here. Question: 
it's really decentralized. Waves decks. So Jordan's asking about waves. Let's go look at waves. Um, I haven't read up on it, Jordan, honestly. Um, the only decks that I've really looked into is Sushi because it's that fork of Uniswap and it's got the most... Um, I've heard about waves. I just haven't read up on it. So I don't have a good answer for you right now. But let's go take a look here. See if, see if I can remember any little clues about it. 2006, ICO. Oh, yeah, okay, yep. Uh, Ivanov, or whatever his name is. I don't have a good opinion for you, Jordan. And you know more about the chart than I do, but let's go look at the chart. I'll tell you the same thing and tell everybody else, Jordan, and you would appreciate this. If it's not beating Bitcoin, I don't care. It's beating Bitcoin, so I care. Let's, let's care about this. Let's all care about this together now. Jordan brought it up. And I don't know anything about it other than it's a DEX. Or it's a decentralized non-custodial exchange as far as I'm aware. Um, let's go look at it real fast. I'm going to look at my other ones that I'm tracking, which are Curve. Another thing is, is waves available on Kraken? That may be also why I'm not really, I'm pretty much only tracking DEXs that are available on Kraken and Sushi, which is kind of the DEX I've chosen. So Curve is another one, it's down. Uni is available on Kraken, all right, and it's not looking too great. And then, With, yeah, Waves has been around a while, but it's it's charts looking good, Jordan. So something's going on there, right? So I, I will add it to my list of things to to research and see what's different with it. Sushi is the one I've been talking about. This, this is my horse in the Dex race. Um, it also looks good. That's why I've been talking about it too. The chart looks good. We break this. I've been waiting for this to break to, to get me a trade on it. Um, but yeah, we've been this ascending channel on Sushi. And I think Waves is probably looking similar. This is versus Bitcoin, so I mean, that's what matters. We wanna beat Bitcoin. And let's go back to, I'll add, I'm gonna add waves to this chart, waves. Is it available on Kraken? Waves XBT. Oh, it is available on Kraken, awesome. Yeah, very good, a good one to add to my list. I'll make it purple. So uh, just for you guys who just follow my channel. So um, green is the main, my HODL positions. I've added VET because I talked about that earlier. I've added VET USD because I'm going to be holding it a small, a very small position, but I'll be holding it uh, um, non-custodial. I'll be out or my own self-custody um, through the through the to, through the end of the bull cycle. So I've added it to the USD chart. My active trades are in blue. So if I have any trades, and I just what I did is just to figure cracking out. I put three trades on my three main HODL positions. Tiny, micro. I mean, like. You know, I could maybe buy a Starbucks coffee with profits if I ever take profits type, type size trades just to figure out Kraken. Um, but those, these are my active trades. And then everything in purple is available in Kraken because in the States, uh, we can trade leverage Kraken. My HODL positions are down here on the USD and then separated by things that I'm watching and trading um, secondarily on Binance, which I have a, a minor account left in Binance. So those are my Binance um, positions that I'm watching. Zill, up big today. But Jordan, I will work on waves. Let's look at your chart. Does it look better than sushi? I don't know. Does it look better than sushi? What does that go back to? Come on, draw. Oh, Kraken uh, only started offering it here pretty recently, so. I will work on this chart research the project to see if there's anything unique about it as far as DEXs go. Um, if there's nothing unique about it, then we'll watch the chart. If there's something unique about it that I've missed, then I will bring that up again. Um, the reason I brought up Sushi, the reason I, I, I've been watching Sushi, the chart's kind of weird, I apologize for that. Um, is this stinking spike, I got to figure out how to get that out of my chart. Uh, is Uniswap is the leader in the space, and this is the um, fork of Uniswap. It's like the open, non, you know, uh, centrally managed version of Uniswap. So that's why I'm watching it. All right. Hi, Brandon. Quick question for you. Do you choose a good alt by comparing the alt BTC chart? Yes. Um, yes, I'm entirely watching the BTC charts. See Jordan in the chat, and not as the host.
Thanks, Jordan. See you guys. How do you trade sushi? Uh, so these anything marked in yellow on my chart is in Binance. So sushi is available in Binance apparently. So I have it marked here. That's where I would be trading it. How's GPTC going up? I've got it down here at the bottom. It's just kind of a market. So anything with a red tag on it is just my like market. I'm just watching the, the it's ETS right now, and then my BLX chart. Bit W. It hit sixty dollars. I've been like I think I, I think I started buying back. I I did buy back this morning at between sixty two and seventy two. I bought half of my position back that I had started with at thirty six. Um, but I'm really looking for it to get down to thirty to forty or fifty. I'll just we'll watch the chart more closely and see see what it does. Price is more important than all the like the technical mumbo jumbo about how ETFs work anyway. Kim agree. I started looking at GBTC BTC chart. Wonder if that's going to be useful at all. Uh, Kelvin, that's that's something worth looking at. I didn't know there was a chart for that, but that makes sense. GB. It should it should fluctuate. Um, I don't know where you can see that at, but um, it should fluctuate. You know, it sh it's almost like leveraged position on Bitcoin. And one thing to notice, right? So another thing to keep in mind. Uh, yeah. So we, we reached the prior all-time high here. We're, we're still below it. This is both fee erosion. So the reason this happens, I'm back on the subject of ETFs, this is two things. ETFs have fees associated with them. So there's a cost to holding them for any length of time. So, um, you know, you want a low fee ETF if you can get it. But um, uh, there's, there's, a, there's, there's some overhead associated with ETFs. So this is a bit of erosion from the overhead of the ETF. And this is also premium. This is a huge premium spike, obviously. So, all right, Brennan, how do you trade? Okay, all right, well, no more questions. Let's get back to the news. Um, the other news item I wanted to highlight here was Coinbase IPO. So Coinbase is obviously the leader in um, on-ramp and exchange for most people. It's the most well-known. And they filed for their IPO. Goldman Sachs is uh, leading to um, help them with their IPO. So that's some news. So Coinbase, I think, if you think about it, Coinbase is, is you know, they, they're obviously aware of stock to flow over there. So they're probably filing for IPO early. They'll go through all the paperwork. They'll publish their um, um, earnings and stuff here pretty soon. And then... And then uh, they'll set their IPO price. Hopefully, you know, for them, I'm assuming they'll be they'll be probably doing the IPO right at the height of the cycle. We'll see. That's what I would do if I was them. He asked if you use a VPN. Do you use a VPN to get to Binance? I do not. Um, I use a VPN for certain things for security, but. I don't use a VPN to get, so I, I apparently I'm grandfathered in. I don't know. I've had a Binance account for like a long time since like, I mean, I probably was a Binance customer a few months after they first became a service. So I may be grandfathered in. I've heard people saying that they can't like, they can't start an account on Binance US. They can't. So I, I guess I'm grandfathered in. But that's why I've taken most of my funds off there too, because it's a little bit strange. But I guess you guys can't start Binance accounts. Hey Adam. Yeah, Binance is so difficult to access. So it, my recommendation would be anything that needs you need a VPN to access. I just flat wouldn't do it because the risk of of something bad happening to your money is is hot much higher, right? I, I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to get my funds confiscated because I'm using a service I'm not supposed to use where I live. So I, I just I wouldn't do it. Yeah, seems shady. Wait, who's closed for business over December holidays? Oh, you are personally planning to catch up on trading over the next couple of weeks. Very good. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping to, to get some stuff organized with my channel. Uh, you know, get my office set up better for doing these and everything over the next couple of weeks when hopefully things are slower. What time is it now? It's not quite three o'clock. Seems shady. All right, so back to the news. <clears throat> um, Goldman Sachs. Um, okay, this self-hosted wallets thing, the, the, the fight over the regulation. 
I, I said this before, and I didn't. I didn't really get a chance. I was busy. I didn't explain why I think the self-hosted wallet thing is just fud. But what it is, what they're actually looking to do is simply regulation on KYC, on making sure that um, that what uh, ba- my understanding is that they will uh, track, the, you know. Um, flows co- t- going to and from unknown wallet addresses basically right and they're requ- now we're, so um, certain exchanges are now required to track that activity that's what it's going to be um, and the idea is is to try to stop you know um, uh, bad actors but this is not this is, if, if this causes a dip this is a great buy the dip because I don't I don't think this is going to be um, I don't think it's going to be a huge a huge thing right now now if this if this develops and they actually get to the point of uh, uh, stopping exchanges from um, being allowed to send to and from non uh, unknown wallet addresses that would be huge I just don't see that happening anytime soon it could happen it's a risk that's been out there for a long time um, but you know, I don't know if you guys went around the last market cycle. This type of stuff was all. There was even more fud like this last cycle. It was the same exact stuff. Oh, regulation is going to shut it down. They're going to make it illegal to, you know, have cryptocurrencies. They're going to make it illegal to use it. This, it the, the same fud has been circulating since the beginning. So, you know, I wouldn't be too terribly worried about it. But it's definitely a risk, and it's definitely good to stay on top of and make sure we understand what's actually happening. There's a part two. I didn't miss. Uh, yeah, so this is all KYC stuff. This is this is just they want to be able to trace. They you know they want tax revenue, and they want to be able to know what's going on with, you know, people's money, so they can tax you. I guess or other reasons too. Legitimate tracking bad, um, bad actors. All right. Quick question about BCH BTC. I imagine BCH will pump soon, but it won't beat BTC because it's slowly sliding into oblivion versus BTC, so not worth it, right? Well, all right. So if any project is gonna beat BTC, right? So BTC is is the horse that's that's pull, uh, it's it's the tide that's coming in. It's that's that's causing all ships to ra- raise. Um, the ships that are gonna rise to the top are gonna be the ones that don't aren't leaky vessels, <laughs> I guess you could say. So yeah, unless Bitcoin Cash has a specific um, you know, reason to cause people to be bullish on it, it it'll continue to bleed versus Bitcoin. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter what I say either. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't matter what my opinion is. Um, if, if the market, if there's something about the project the market likes, it'll start to gain versus Bitcoin um, versus just, just on the USD chart, it, it'll continue to rise with Bitcoin a little bit but lose versus Bitcoin. But if the market likes it and there's something good about it, we'll see it happen on the charts. And that's really how I do my research is I'm, I look at the charts first and I go, okay, the market doesn't like this. There's no point in me wasting my time and energy trying to figure out, you know, why the market doesn't like it or creating a thesis around why I think the market should like it. It flat doesn't matter. If the market doesn't like it, the market doesn't like it. And I'm not going to fight the market. I'm just going to respect what the market's doing. And I, I may... You know, like like for me, I was in energy for a long time. There's a lot of energy projects that I liked that I thought were viable, good companies, but the market didn't care. And I learned my lesson the hard way, trying to invest anyway and, and hold for the market to you know realize my thesis. And either a couple things happened. One, I ended up waiting for forever. I was right, but it went nowhere for a very long time. And then when the market realized I was right, it didn't really care, and it just kind of kept going sideways. Two, I was wrong, and it kept going down. Uh, three, I was right. The market realized it immediately and it didn't care. Or four, I was wrong. The market was right and I lost money. So it's like just trading counter trend regardless. If, if you have this macro thesis that you're holding to and you, you're trading based on that, if the market doesn't like, it doesn't agree with you, you're going to lose money. It's that simple. So just don't do it. Um, so yeah, like these, like ADA is like, technically speaking, ADA is very beat down, and so like I shouldn't be buying a lot of ADA, um, and I and I won't take any trades on it, but it does have some life. Like we see this very long bowl down here. This is kind of a traditional bottoming pattern, and so we're starting to see some life. 
Ethereum, same thing, right? We've seen it kind of bottom out and we see some life. Blink has been super strong versus Bitcoin for a very long time. We're coming into key support. Lots of good reasons to buy Link. We're coming into key support on a lot of these and they have the wherewithal. The market was attracted to them for some reason. This this happened because the market likes what this, this project's doing, right? These spikes happen because the market likes them. So we're moving in the right direction on all of these names. Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash has just pretty much been down. I mean, it gets, and these are just like dead cat bounces, right? This is just straight down. So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. And anything, any chart that looks like this, if it doesn't, it's just bleeding versus Bitcoin, the market didn't like it, I, you know? All right, um, that's yeah, super helpful to get that insight thing. From what I, from time frame, do you look at all BTC charts to see quality look back last bull bear market? All right, time frame to see, um, Frankly, I don't care about what happened last cycle. Uh, actually, I, I care extremely little about what happened last I think, so I have a theory. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. When well, we're all said and done with this cycle, a bunch of people, especially early on, projects like Litecoin are going to pump. Um, but then they're going to fade really hard at the end of the cycle. So what's going to happen is the, the new guard will come in and the old guard will fade away. So people are initially... You know, few people are getting back into crypto. Maybe they did decently well last cycle. They bought at the top last cycle, whatever. You know, they're going to remember the names of last cycle, like Litecoin. Um, and they're going to go buy things that were last cycle buys early on in the, in the in the cycle. But then the market isn't going to care. The market's going to buy in large what's, what's really moving. And so the time frame I'd say is 2020. Like I care about what's happened this year. Like everything else before that, it's irrelevant. It's it's times long past. Um, I care about like maybe maybe this year what's happened. So link link since the beginning of 2020 is up versus Bitcoin. Nice steady uptrend, and we're sitting right on it right now. Great time to potentially look to add. I added some here like a fool. I foolishly added a small 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 leverage position there. That was a mistake. I'm still holding it because we haven't fallen below these key levels. I was watching. I might bottom fish and add some more here, but I really, I really won't add anything significant. And I should quit saying that I even telling people that I added here because I don't want people to like just, you know, that, that, that's a, that, that was a mistake and that was me just trying to be cute and pick the bottom, which I did not do. I'm down. Um, we need to clear all this. We need to clear all this mess and then we're good to trade it. And that's not really that far away. It feels that far away in the very short term, but I mean, compared to this, waiting, waiting, waiting to get above here for safety's sake and when this is our you know initial goal and then above that's you know we'll, we'll continue to take some profit up here and, and then keep the trade on that's a huge move so just waiting this little bitty bit for that bit of safety and that for the to be with the market as opposed to against the market it's just a thing to do uh hey gene uh what saved you a ton of time s n e w Gotcha. Looking at the bottom action, market liked Litecoin today. Yeah, and the market. So early in the, I think, and and maybe I'm wrong about Litecoin. Maybe Litecoin has a lot more market um, potential than I think it does. I think things like wrapped Bitcoin and being able to put uh, tokenized Bitcoin, actual Bitcoin, on other faster chains is going to be the answer, or the Lightning Network, or something like that. I just I think messing around with all these other coins, Dash, Litecoin, etc. I don't, I don't know that the market's going to like that in the long run. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay with, like, the Zcash and Monero because they have privacy um, built in. So, all right. Just your analysis. Yeah. Oh, my analysis. Cool. Um, so many names, so many places. Got to run. Hey, thanks, Jay Carey. Probably already missed you, but... Um, Gene. What's up, man? All right. Bitcoin looking good. Let's look at this on a short, short, short time frame. Somebody asked earlier if this is forming my rocket pad formation, which is, I mean, a rocket pad just a bull pit. In. I just was joking around with the whole rocket pad thing, by the way. But yeah, I mean, it could be starting to. It's definitely not yet. It's too, way too short of a time frame for me to say that anything's happening on it. Uh, when we ping pong a couple more times at the upper and lower part, I mean, it's holding this lower kind of pseudo trend line we got here it's really just an extension of this trend line so this trend line i mean 
maybe the market's, maybe my trend line's off. Maybe that's what's going on. But nonetheless, um, yeah, there's some, there's some potential action here, but it hasn't hit these levels enough for me to go, yeah, this is definitely some kind of bull flag. Or, you know, this could just be a straight, straight bull flag, not a pennant. Actually, this is kind of bull flagging. That is, that is what's happening. It's a bull flag. But, but a bull flag, you know, it's not, a, it's not a, these wick up, these high wicks up here. You know, it's still not like a super crisp bull flag. But yeah, maybe that's a bull flag for me. Any thoughts on a fresh wave of CME FUD? Um, yeah, it's going to happen. It's, um, uh, so here, here's, here's what's going to happen. I mean, this is throughout the, this whole cycle, if y'all run last cycle, there's all kinds of different flavors of FUD that'll be thrown out. You'll have, you'll have it the next time we have a sell off, whenever that is, right? So it goes to $30,000 or $40,000. You'll have any little news that would have been ignored because we were going up will be highlighted because we're coming down. People are going to write articles dedicated for, you know, just just to get clicks. These, these journalists just want to get people looking at their site. You'll have the Warren Buffetts and the whoever is on CNBC going, well, you know, it doesn't have any intrinsic value and that's why it's going to, whatever. Um, it, it is, yeah, there's going to be a lot of FUD. Um, is it manipulation? I don't know, Gene, if what you're getting at, maybe I, I'm not really answering your question. But I, yeah, there's going to be FUD all over the place. And, and it's going to shake a lot of people out, unfortunately. Um, that's why it's, this is harder than you think. Like everybody, you know, a lot of people that are clued in here, we kind of all know Bitcoin's going up. But as soon as it starts going down, people start questioning things. And I start, they start taking FUD more seriously and they start getting concerned. And, and then it goes right back up. Um, and so read the, read the FUD, make sure you understand it and, and, and do your best to wade through it. But um, Gene, I don't know if that got it, like I don't know if the question's geared at is there manipulation going on with FUD? Um, I, I don't know. I, th I think there's market manipulation for sure, but I think it happens on a kind of fairly short time frame. Um, I think over the longer term, uh, you know, the market the market does what the market does. Now I don't know. There's there's some heavy manipulation. I mean, just look. Well, I'm, I'm totally lying when I say I'm I'm being I'm trying to be kind, but. If you can look at this, with what's happened in 2020, if you can look at this chart, <laughs> and you don't think it's market manipulation, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Anywho. <clears throat> um, all right. I think, uh, I think we've got good quorum here. I went through everything that I wanted to go through. I was very, very disjointed early on. Apologize for that. I don't have a good flow. Is BTC pumping all of a sudden? It's probably pumping on a very low time frame because I just looked at it. Uh, so, on a daily, no, it's consolidating. On a 12 minute, uh, I mean, that's just, that's right here. See this level? So, what just happened? You see this line? This is our trend line, right? There is enough buyers to push it over this trend line. And so, this is a very short term, maybe short covering or whatever right they just this is this is taking out this liquidity so you hear Keith talk about liquidity there's a little bit of liquidity built up right here as we kept getting rejected on that trend line and people were uh, placing their orders thinking it was going to go down and when enough buyers came in to push it just above that trend line that liquidity got taken out and that's what that's liquidity that's liquidity purge and just happened there and that's happening all the time that's just that's just the market moving around same thing look look let's see if I can find another example they, they happen all the time right this is kind of forming a bull flag. Uh, we had enough sellers come take it out. There was a little bit of liquidity and it purged down, right? So that's all that is. All right, thanks, Adam. Um, I'm going to wrap up soon anyway, Adam. So today's FUD Bitcoin is in a massive bubble and investors don't understand how the supply works, says economist David Rosenberg. Oh, good. There you go. Any news? Why is Bitcoin pumping all of a sudden? Yeah, so... Um, I, I think this was just market moving around. This hasn't moved enough for me to say one way or the other. But this is positive, right? So this trend line that, uh, I don't, I, I do this trend line after we got here. So I cheated a little bit. So I had some market, I had some market data to work on when I, but I drew it early, but you can see it's been obviously reacting with that. And we're, 
you know, bull flagging. You know, it's just ping ponging around this range. I wouldn't say that that's anything significant. Yeah, it's just a little green bar. But look, we had one. See that green bar right there? Uh, one right there, and then it went that way. <laughs> so, like, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Now these, expansion out of a, no, this is a little bit of consolidation, expansion out of that consolidation. We'll see if we hit the top of this bull flag, I don't know. Jordan and you guys doubled my account one month, I owe you a lot. It wasn't me. Uh, Jordan might have helped you. You're the one that took action and did it, so not me. Um, Rosenberg doesn't understand POW mining. He says Bitcoin supply will inflate. Yeah. Thanks, Joel. Thanks, Ghost. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm committed to trying to make this channel better, um, and just adding adding information for people just getting started, especially and, and for the community. But it's not not something I'm gonna be able to put a ton of time and energy into anytime soon. So I don't know how to access all this. Mike, what do you mean you don't have to access all this? You wanna, uh, yeah, let me see if your comments, if I missed something. So lost. Oh, uh, I like BH, BCH also. Is that Bitcoin Cash right? Yeah, we talked about Bitcoin Cash earlier. I mean, the market doesn't like it. You might like it. I, I don't know what to tell you, man. If you like it and the market doesn't, just keep an eye on it. Put it on a watch list, and when the market decides it likes it, then, then take action. But right now, the market is telling you to short it <laughs> versus Bitcoin. I mean, it is going up versus the U.S. dollar, so I'm being a little bit silly. I don't know how to... Uh, I used an exchange that allows me to play with six coins. Ooh, that's pretty limiting. The Honest channel are few and far between, so keep at it. Makes a legit positive difference in the world have a great weekend gene take care all right guys um i'm gonna wrap up here i think we got through do i have any more news i do not do not do not do not well, there you go there's my top hodl i'm gonna be adding a v that's the big the big thing for me today is out i'm adding v chain to my hodl list um small percentage Good project. I've been reading up more and more on it. I think it's important given what's going on in the world, supply chain logistics. I think, uh, you know, as 2021 develops, that'll be a big push. All right, everybody, let's uh, let's roll some. Uh, well, you know what? Let's end it. Yeah, let me go find my. So on my channel, I'm starting to build up. I'm finding some different. Now, right now, I've got very. Uh, upbeat music. I'm going to be finding some kind of zen music too. Um, but 